In this lesson, we're going to learn the basics of dynamic playing. Now, dynamic playing, as I mentioned earlier, is really playing fast. And these scales are great for being able to burn up and down the neck if you want to play fast. Of course, you have to have the technique to do that, and you have to do lots of exercises to build your fingers up. So in this lesson, I'll be showing you a few patterns, numerical patterns, where you group the scale into six notes. And I'll also be showing you some exercises to strengthen your fingers. Let me demonstrate for you now. Now, one way to structure the scale, as I mentioned earlier, is to break it down into groups of six notes. And one of the patterns I played demonstrating the dynamic phrases was... like that. And you can do the same thing... coming back. Now, I'm going to show you this pattern. Ideally, you want to be able to pick down and up with the right hand to get full speed capabilities. We start with the third fret with our first finger, and we simply climb along the pattern from here up the scale six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, again. Then starting on the fifth string, we do exactly the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, and again. And starting on the fourth string, we begin another series of six notes. Same with the third string, and same with the second string. And as you get good at this, you can start hearing the actual rhythm. It rather sounds like a galloping effect, diddly diddly dee. And coming back, we have the same pattern, starting on the first string, descending down the scale six notes, and the string you always leave off with, in this case the second string, is your start point for the next group of six. So we start on the second string and go down another six notes. Same with the third string. Fourth. Fifth. That. Good luck with those groups of six. Before we go on, I recommend that you practice playing groups of six on pattern two and pattern three, both across and back. What we're going to do now is some interesting finger exercises to build our strength so we can really get fast at doing these scales. One of the problems is, when you first learn these scale patterns, they do pose a bit of a challenge for your fingers, especially with the big stretch and some of the finger configurations where you have three notes per string. But just doing these scales alone, these scale patterns alone, will not really give you the strength and dexterity you need to play fast. So now we're going to take a look at some exercises which will really build the muscles and the coordination especially between fingers four and three, which are usually the weakest on a person's left hand. This first exercise, place your little finger on the seventh fret first string, place your third finger on the sixth fret first string, and finally your middle finger on the fifth fret first string. And what I want you to be able to do is to very slowly and evenly, with the right hand, pick down and up, continuously between fingers four, three, and two. Now, this doesn't seem too difficult, but if you gradually increase the speed, you may find that the pick with the right hand doesn't quite synchronize with these weaker fingers, and you end up with a sort of a, an out-of-sync out of synchronization kind of sound. So what you want to do is find a speed that you're comfortable with, 
and gradually increase the speed until you reach a point where you can't quite pick very fast and coordinate those weaker fingers. And then try and maintain a level of speed just below where you're finding it difficult and keep that up for a period of time until your little finger, third finger and middle finger, start to line up a little bit better in time with the right hand picking action. Now that's one section. Then you can do this in the next section or stage of the exercise. is to start out going four, three, two, and then switch to a string next to it. In this case, will be the second string. So we go four, three, two, four, three, two, and work your way across the neck. When you get to the sixth string, come back to the fifth. Never repeat the same string twice. Once again. And just keep it going. Eventually, you'll start to feel a slight painful sensation or a slight ache between your fourth and third finger or in the palm of your hand. And if, of course, it hurts, don't do it beyond the point where it's starting to hurt too much. But a little bit of achiness will help strengthen those fingers. Another exercise would be to put your third finger on the 11th fret, first string. Pick the string once with the right hand and do a hammer on and pull off with the little finger. When you do the pull off though, be sure you don't pull the string off the edge of the neck producing a unpleasant sound like that. It's quite easy to do on some guitars. And you can continue with this exercise in this section of exercises by going down the neck one at a time, one fret at a time, with the hammer on and pull off, and then coming back again. And once again, just keep doing it without pausing at all, or stopping on any fret. And that will really increase the strength of your little finger. This last set of exercises take place on the first fret, the second, the third, and the fourth fret of all the strings. And these are the ones that really help in building up all your fingers because they involve every single finger combination that one can use with the left hand. And they do involve hammering on and pulling off. I'll show you a few, but you can refer to the written notes for the remaining set of them because they're rather long and they take a while to do because you start on the first string work your way across to the sixth and then back to the first again. The first exercise would be one, two, three, four, and you play the first fret with the first finger and you simply hammer on. When that's completed, you go to the second string and so on and so forth till you get all the way to the sixth string. When you get to the sixth string, of course, your thumb has to be under the neck to reach around. And then after that, you work your way back from the sixth string across to the first string. So don't stop on the sixth string and then repeat it. Just come straight back. And actually, do not really play these too fast. Make a very slow and deliberate attempt at playing them at an even speed. And the next exercise would be, we'll take one, two and then it'll go four three so this would be hammer on to four put three down and then pull off things to watch out for is when you hammer on the four make sure the little finger doesn't go down with it this way you're controlling which fingers are used when you want them and again with that you go across and back and we could try this one here this is rather an awkward one for most people one three four, put two down, lift three off, and pull off. Again. And work your way across and back with that. Now, there are a pile of combinations starting with your first finger, 
and another row of combinations starting with your middle finger like two, one, three, four, etc. all across and back or three, four, one, two and a whole column starting with every combination your fingers can do starting with the fourth fourth fret going this way. Let's take a sample one. We'll try four, three, one, two. Essentially, when you look at the written material, if the number goes from a higher number to a lower number, in this case like four to two or four to one, then the four is pulled off to that number, fret number. And if the numbers go up, like say from two to three or two to four, that presumes that you will be doing a hammer-on. So if the numbers go up, it's a hammer-on. If the numbers go down, it's a pull-off. And one thing, it's much harder to do these exercises on a nylon string or classical guitar. Now, not everyone has one, but with an electric guitar, when you have the amplifier on, of course, the note will sustain for a long time. Whereas with a nylon string or an acoustic guitar, the note will die away quite a bit. The strings are a little thicker, and therefore they give your fingers a much harder workout, which will help you, again, get your speed when you want to play fast, dynamic solos. If you can get into the habit of practicing these exercises at least 10 minutes a day, I guarantee you'll notice a huge improvement in your performance and playing speed.